Hello, welcome back. I'm with Nick Rodway, the CEO of Core Assets Corp. Nick, good to see you. Thanks for having me on, Peter. Uh, just a brief overview for those less familiar. What's the company as it stands at the moment? So uh, we're a pr pretty early stage discovery story, and that's you know that the majority of our shareholders are, are in it for you know the upside on discovery, and we've been you know lucky and fortunate enough to be continuing to upgrade our results using geological techniques that generally you know bring your grade down. So uh, we discovered what's called the Grizzly target or Grizzly Manto, which is a carbonate replacement style system in 2020. And since then we've done grab sampling, you know, channel sampling, and then we've drilled, we recently drilled it and put out some results. And with each of those uh, different techniques, we actually brought our grade up for zinc, silver, lead, copper. And we also found that we have a gold credit in there as well. So um, everything right now is, is going extremely well. And, and that, that only accounts for 3% of our drill results back to date. So we still have 97% left to come in and they'll be coming in even into the new year. So we're excited to put all that technical information together and uh, you know put it into our model and, and produce the first 3D model that this property has, has ever seen because it's never been worked historically. Got a lot of questions on the drilling and, and sort of what, what sort of this model could look like. But before we go into that, what's, what's the capital structure as it stands at the moment with the company? Yeah, so right now we got about 77 million, uh, 100 million outstanding fully diluted, mm -hmm. and 25% of the shares are owned by insiders. So it's pretty tightly held. And uh, we had a, a company called Crestcat Capital came in for a large chunk in two of our financings so far this year. So they, they own just under 20% of our company as well. So they'd be our only institutional um, buyer. And uh, our cash position now, uh, we've got just over a million dollars Canadian with, with everything paid for about for last season. And, and we're going to go pretty aggressive here in the, in the new year. And we're going to do a minimum of 5,000 meters. And we're going to try to do as much as we possibly can. And now that we understand the geology and the plumbing system in the area, we're going to be able to do some very targeted exploration. Just taking a step back, obviously, you're, it's greenfield exploration. You mentioned that no one's ever really put drill holes in this part of the world. Yes. What made you decide to, to go poking around and, and looking around this sort of area? So, I mean, initially it was looking at green energy metals. You know, we're looking for copper, cobalt, um, you know, s silver and, and, you know, polymetallic discoveries, things that can withstand downturns in the market, you know? And uh, so I, I spent over a year studying what's called the Atwood Mining District. And the question was why, you know, down to the south, there's a very prolific area known as the Golden Triangle. And the question was, why wasn't there a lot of work and staking done to the northwest of there? Because the, all the rocks are the same age, you know, same similar type rocks. So the question, the answer to that question that we, we now know is there is no no reason. And so using uh, geological information through government databases, you know, we found that uh, about 80 percent of this project that we own, which is a very large land package over 1,100 square kilometers, um, it never been staked from the beginning of time, and it was due to glacial cover. So I, I was the first person to walk this ground um, after the glaciers have retreated. And that was why we were able to, to find such a substantial amount of massive sulfide or metal actually at surface, because it is very unheard of to find that anywhere in the world in this day and age. So we're a brand new project, brand new discovery. And, and we're just, you know, we're following the steps and we're trying to make our every dollar go as far as we can to get as much information as we can and, and try to make the value for the shareholders, which I'm one a shareholder myself, and I own a large percentage of the company. So, obviously, I'm driven here to, to make this thing work. No, of course. We've, obviously, we've been uh, previously glacial land. Um, is there some till? Uh, have you been doing any basic till work? Well, what's the how's the geological work forming? What, what sort of work have you done? I was the prospector that did the initial work. So I went up there just uh, you know had an idea, and I started running into massive sulfide in a carbonate unit. So you have a, it's white and black. You have your limestone, which is your mm -hmm. your basic unit, and then you have your acid, which is your ore fluid right so um, when I went up there the first time I, I didn't really know exactly what it was that I found but I knew it was something substantial uh, but there's no need for you know any till sampling because it's all bedrock uh, there's no there's no vegetation there either and uh, it's actually this is actually a hotel job so we're based out of a hotel and we're about 12 minutes away at a helicopter ride or you can travel to the property in boat in the summer and then in winter we bring a lot of our gear down um, on the ice. So it's, you know, pretty, again, pretty uncommon to find something that's accessible and cheap to operate 
with a brand new discovery in this day and age, especially in Canada. Well, let's talk about the drill campaign that you've just done. How, how was that funded? Um, you say you still got a million in the bank. What? Uh, run us through that drill. How many meters were done? How, sort of what depths were you looking? So we did. We did about seventy four hundred meters. Mm -hmm. uh, we we actually did a raise uh, about uh, two months ago in order to bring our drilling from five thousand to seventy five hundred, and and we we ended up going to seventy four hundred. Uh, so we did a raise at sixty one cents for what, about one point five and change, and uh, we've had some. Uh, we've had a lot of the same supporters coming in, uh, whether that be retail or, or institutional like uh, Crest Cat Capital Corp. So they've, they've been funding us uh, throughout the way. And, uh, you know, deepest, we, we, our aim this year was, again, to put our money to work here the best we could. So we had very aggressive, hard to even call it step outs, but distances between pads. Uh, so we had three main pads. Uh, one we call the Sulfide City target, we have the Grizzly target, and then the, the Jackie target. And they were all aimed to gather information about what's called the carbonate replacement side of the, of the system. But we actually ended up drilling into a porphyry as well, and not just uh, you know, alteration, but mineralization. So we, got, we have very heavy uh, molybdenum mineralization, and that's what you would expect to see from a system feeding a, a large CRD. And what I keep telling people about here is, you know, it's, it's obviously a huge bonus and a big box to check that we hit the intrusion, but, you know, the larger mining companies are looking for large, long-term mine life, right? So if you can find a CRD at surface, you know, that can really kickstart and bring your capex down on, on, a, on a porphyry style system. So, you know, juniors, it can be very expensive and, and unsuccessful just to go after porphyries blindly as a junior, but when you have as much mineralization, like actual tangible mineralization, you're not just looking for it, you know, you know it's there, and now we've actually displayed it in, in drill holes and we've hit the porphyry. I mean, you can't really ask for a better first season. I mean, I haven't done anything like that in my life for sure. So it's just been, it's been great to be a part of it from the beginning. And, you know, just the understanding that I have of this project now is, is so good that, you know, we're, we're now going to be doing some very, very uh, stringent targeted ex exploration and it's going to be cheaper to do that. But you mentioned in you, you, you still have around 97% of the drill results still to come out. That's correct. What can you tell us about the three percent that have come out? What, what, what sort of grades and? Yeah, so we, we about two weeks ago or two three weeks ago we we put out some rushed samples. So so with carbonate replacement style oh. deposits, you have a massive sulfide unit which is very vi visual. You can tell any geologist or even even someone who's not a geologist can tell there's something different about that increment of rock. So what we did is we rushed some samples in order, you know, you don't want to rush a whole hole because it would be very expensive, it's about double the cost. So we picked out increments of CRD over a large distance, two kilometers apart, mm -hmm. and we rushed those uh, just to give the market and shareholders and, and ourselves confidence about what we're going after. And it, is the grade there? Is this thing worth putting money into the ground exploring? And of course, we checked that box in a big way with, with you know, one of the high, well, it was the highest grade polymetallic uh, result that came back even from grad sampling or channel sampling at the Grizzly area, and it, it was about 47% combined metal, with a with a, a one increment in there of about uh, 1.16 meters of over 1,100 grand silver, 25% zinc and 25% lead, and also half percent copper and 0.3 gold. So we yeah. we never even thought that there was gold in the system until we we drilled that. And our thesis is that these things are continuous all the way back to the source, and they upgrade as you get closer to the source. And so far, we've checked all those boxes through diamond drilling. Brilliant. Okay, um, give us a bit of a timeline of when the results will be. Obviously, uh, we're expecting quite a lot now of yep. new assays. When 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 can we expect them? Yeah. So all of the holes now are off at the lab, and they're being processed as we speak. And they generally come back in in, in increments. A uh, little bit of this hole, a little bit of that hole. So we're going to wait till we get everything together, and we can actually model this and get the big picture. And then we're going to present, you know, our findings of this year and what where we're headed, where what our plan is. And but one thing we do know is that we will be back there next year, and you know, because fir first seasons. You don't really know how they're going to go and you can't guarantee that you're going to be back in next season but you know we know we're going to be there and we know that it's worth spending money on this project just even from this limited data that we've had back yeah well i'm assuming obviously you won't be able to get a resource based on the drilling you've done this time around it's no, your first no. time but yeah. it will give you a very educated clue as to where to go poking holes next year and then maybe you can, you can yeah it. it'll help us understand geometry mm -hmm. and continuity of our system and you know in in the next three to five years we will begin to work <laughs> towards a resource if we're you know fortunate to keep 
pulling good results. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's always a, a little tiny bit of luck involved as well, but so far, you know, we're using geologic techniques and they are working. So, you know, the science of behind the project is, is, is working out well and it's matching up to some of the largest CRDs in, in the world right now. And we got that porphyry there as a bonus. We're really excited to get the results back to see, see where we're at with, the, with regards to grade and the porphyry. All going well, obviously get the assays back. When, when would you be looking to start campaign, the next campaign? Uh, May 1st is generally when you, when you can start. Once you, again, once you figure out these, um, these deposit types, you can start earlier, right? It doesn't matter if there's a bit of snow on the ground. But again, first season this year, this year we actually did some drilling. We have two projects within our large contiguous land package and one of them is at a much lower elevation. So we chose to go in and, and try to begin to characterize that one first. Um, and then we moved up to our silver line project once the snow was melted. So we could see, because we were, we were following a, what I call a prospector's approach. So you, you're drilling what you can see, you're putting pads in areas where you can cross cut geologic units. And that's the, you know, the correct way of doing it as opposed to drilling down, um, down dip. And yeah, we just, we, we've hit, every time we're in limestone, we hit these carbonate replacement units. And then we've got extensive scarn, endoscarn, exoscarn, and then the porphyry. So yeah, May 1st is kind of your start date though for, for 2023. I guess looking back at, or, or to taking a big picture view of just the, the area, um, like I said, you're, you're one of the first guys to first move, movers in this area. What's the local and stakeholder support like for mining? Obviously it's, it's fairly new to them. Is there any First Nations you're dealing with? What, what, what's the local yeah, population? So, so like? it's actually not new to the town. The town of Atlin is, mm. was created through mining and through what we call placer mining. So yep. that's a, it's gold mining and unconsolidated sediments. So Atlin was founded in the late 1800s, 1890s by two prospectors. And they found an area called Pine Creek. And, and that went on later to be one of, it's the, one of the largest placer operations in, in Canada. Uh, very well known so it's a mining town right and i mean you can tell that as soon as you step foot in it you know just from the architecture of, of the town uh, so gen the general consensus in the town is pro mining it's just but no one's ever gone to the hard rock side of things it's all been the unconsolidated pl placer uh, mining with regards to first nations there is a first nations group in town and we are you know constantly uh, in um, talks with them and letting them know what we're doing every step of the way but you know remember this project is so early stage here that we're trying to prove to people right now that there is a reason to actually have agreements with us and stuff because yeah. until you actually produ you know produce results and show people that you're real and you're not just messing around then you know it's hard to get anyone to take you serious with these early early stage projects but now of course we're going to be doing you know more agreements with with locals and, and getting the locals more involved Good, Nick. It sounds like you're you're on your way there. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.